All right, welcome back, guys. Today we're going to talk about a lesson on balancing equations in chemistry. So this tends to um, confuse a lot of students when they're trying to go back and forth. And I find most of the time it's just because they try to do too much of it at once. And you really need to break balancing formulas down into a stepwise process one element at a time. And we're going to go ahead and practice some of them today. But first, I just want to recap a couple of important points. So if you look here on the screen, we've got a chemical equation or a chemical reaction. This part right here that comes before the arrow it's important you know the terms when you're dealing with a chemical reaction. So this right here is the reactants. These are the reactants. Now the reactants are the compounds you're going to mix together or use in order to form what's on the right-hand side. And we refer to what is on the right-hand side as the product. And we're always aiming to get the product when we're dealing with chemistry. So we put our reactants together, we put an effort in, and then we end up with some sort of product. So when we're going for the product, you can see the product has this little G, and the reactants also have the G. Now, it's not always a G, but there usually is something in small parentheses down at the bottom there in the subscripts that represents the state of matter, and that's important. So there's four major ones that you'll come across. You'll see S for solid, L for liquid, G for gas, and then the last one is AQ. And AQ stands for aqueous. Aqueous refers to ions or other molecules that are dissolved inside of water as a solvent. And that's how a lot of reactions take place. We dissolve them in, inside solvents. But aqueous specifically refers to anything dissolved in water. And you'll see a lot of that as you start to do some more of your general chemistry chapters. You're going to see precipitate reactions that occur in water and things of that nature. So let's look at how we balance these equations. So let's look at the first example that we just had. H2, so hydrogen gas, plus oxygen gas, just like we would breathe in the atmosphere, if you put enough energy in with those two, you can create water vapor, H2O gas. Now, this one might seem very simple, and you might be able to balance it in your head just from looking at it. But it's important to learn the steps that you go through in order to balance these equations because they can get a lot more complex quickly. Now, the first thing we want to do is we're going to pick an element. So I just like to start on the left. You have hydrogen. So the first thing we're going to do is check the hydrogens on each side. So let's balance the H. So over on the reactant side, we have two hydrogens. And over on the product side, we have two hydrogens. So that was easy. We're set with that. So let's move to the next one. There's only one other here. We need to balance the oxygen. So when we balance the oxygen over on the reactant side, this little two here means we have two oxygens. Over here, we only have one. H2O, there's only one oxygen there. Because we only have one oxygen, we're going to need to go ahead and multiply this through by two, and that'll give us two oxygens. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite this as an intermediate step. Now, I'm going to leave the states out of the intermediate steps, the little g's. We can bring them back in the fold at the end. So what I've proposed is that I put a 2 in front of the H2O because now there's two oxygens in the H2O because I have two H2O molecules. So once I've done that, I'm still not done because I need to always go through and do a final check. So I'm going to write this back up here. H 2 plus O2 goes to 2 H2O. So when I'm at this point and I've gone through both of them, I'm going to go back, or however many you have, you're going to go back and you're going to do a recheck balance or a final check. So if I come over here, I now see that I have two hydrogens on this side, but now the 2 times 2 here means I have four hydrogens total on this side. So balancing those oxygens have now thrown the hydrogens out of whack. So I will need to multiply by two for my hydrogens here. I'll go ahead and I'll put that up there. 
So that will give me a total of four hydrogens here and four hydrogens there. So that's good. Now, the oxygens on this side, I have two oxygens from the O2. And then on the product side, I still have two oxygens from the 2H2O. So now, I'm completely set. Everything is balanced. So the final equation would be 2H2 in gas form plus O2 in gas form going to 2H2O in gas form. And that would be the balanced equation. Now, one of the things we have to think about is why do we actually want to balance equations? Why does it even matter? And the answer to that is that equations always need to be balanced in order to actually use them for calculations and when you're preparing experiments. So when you're getting ready to actually do an experiment, these equations are like recipes. You're going to have to figure out how much of one compound I need to produce another compound. So maybe I need three eggs and one cup of flour in order to create some sort of a baked good or recipe. That recipe, those numbers, the three and the one, are telling me how much I need of each. It's the same thing here. We have to balance this so that I know how many I need. This is telling me I need two moles of hydrogen and one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water vapor. That's what this equation is telling me. Now, it's also important that you note I didn't bring this up earlier. These tiny subscripts, the two, the two, the two, and the H2O, all of those twos, none of those ever change. You are not permitted to go in and change the subscripts because then you're actually changing the chemical formula. You're not permitted to play around and alter chemical formulas. What you are permitted to do is state how many of those chemical formulas you desire to have in order to balance your reaction. And that's where the big numbers, which we call stoichiometric coefficients, come in. So let's take a look at another one, because that one was a fairly simple one. We'll do one that's a little more complex, but is still somewhat easy for you guys. Methane gas, which is, oh, I'm sorry about that. CH4, that's a gas is going to be combusted with O2 as a gas. And it's going to come over and give us CO2 as a gas plus, I'm going to run out of room here, H2O as a gas, so water vapor. So this is the reaction that I'm looking at now. So it's a little more complex than just the hydrogen and oxygen. We have carbon that's been thrown in, and we also have more than one product. We have two products that we need to balance here. So let's start. I'm going to just go straight for the first atom. So I'm going to say I've got one carbon on my reactant side, and over here I've got one carbon on my product side from the CO2, and the C from the methane was for the reactant side. So C's balance. That's great. We can move on from that. H is the next one I'm going to look at. Over on the reactant side, I have CH4, so there's four H's. There's no H's involved in the oxygen. The CO2 on the product side has no H's. The H2O has two H's. So due to that, I'm going to multiply by two in order to bring it up to four to match my reactant side. So I'll go ahead and I'll rewrite this. I'm going to bring it to the next page. CH4, remember I'm leaving the states off while we're balancing these, plus O2 goes to CO2, and then we said let's put a 2 in front of the H2O in order to give four hydrogens. So we had one carbon, we had one carbon, that's great. Now we have four hydrogens here. We have four hydrogens here, because remember two times two, over there, that's four hydrogens, so they're good. And now the next one we want to go and look at is the oxygen. So for oxygen, on the left-hand side, on the reactant side, I've got two for my O2. And then I come over to the right, and I look, I have CO2, so that's two of them, and then two H2O, so there's another two from the H2O. So that's going to give me a total of four oxygens there versus two here. So what I need to do, I need to multiply by 2, and I'll bring that up to 4. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my 2 into the O2, 
and then that should hopefully balance the oxygens so that they're balanced. So then we go through, we do a final check. Let's look at this reaction. Are the carbons balanced? There's one carbon on the CH4, there's one on the CO2. They're good. Four hydrogens on the methane on the left-hand side, four hydrogens due to two water molecules on the right-hand side, so that's good. The oxygens we just did, they should be good. Two molecules of O2 for a total of four oxygens. I get two of my oxygens on the product side from the CO2, and I get another two from the two water vapor molecules that have one oxygen each. So now this one is set. All right, I'm going to give you guys one more that's a little bit more of a challenge, and then we should go ahead and wrap the balancing part up. Now, it's important to also balance equations, like I was saying, because you want to use them for calculations or to predict how much of a compound you can make. There's going to be a separate lecture at some point on what's called limiting reactants and theoretical yields. And you have to have a balanced equation in order to use those, in order to find out your theoretical yield. So let's do this last one. We've got CH3OH, which is methanol with O2 going to CO2 and H2O. So this is somewhat similar, but now instead of just the C and the H, we threw in another O and H over here for the methanol instead of the methane. So let's start how we normally do. Balance the C's. One C over here from the so the one C over there for the methanol, and then you have one C over here from the carbon dioxide. Now, the next thing that I need to do after I've been looking at that is I'm going to go for the hydrogens. The hydrogen here, I have three of them from the methanol, and then another one right at the end of the methanol. So I have a total of four hydrogens over on this side. So I've got four hydrogens on that side. I only have two based on my water on this side. So again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a multiply by 2 here. So let's update that. We're going to put CH3OH plus O2 goes to CO2 plus 2H2O. So now we're good. The carbons and the hydrogens have been balanced. So now we need to go and we need to balance the oxygen. So we're going to look. Over here, now I have three oxygens. I have the O2, but I also have that O from the methanol. So I've got a total of three oxygens over here. And how many do I have over on the right side? If you count them up, you should have four at this point. Two of them from a CO2 molecule, and then two from each individual water molecule for a total of four. So now it's not a common multiple of two or four. It's not quite as easy to go in and balance. So we have to figure out what we're going to do at this point. If you notice, the O2 is a multiple of 2 because it's, it always comes as a package of O2. So doing that is not going to allow me to escape the odd even numbering that I have here. However, the methanol only has 1 if I look at this oxygen right here. So putting a number in front of this, I could potentially increase three to an even number instead of an odd number. And it's going to be easier to work in even numbers because I can balance them out as a factor of two. So what I'm going to do here is I'll go ahead and I'll propose that I multiply by two in order to bring this oxygen up to two oxygens for the methanol. So let's go ahead and rewrite that. I'm saying that I'll have two CH3OH plus O2 going over to CO2 plus 2H2O is where I stand at this point. All right. Once we have that, we're going to go ahead, because we've gone through and we're attempting to balance the oxygens, we're going to do a final check and we're going to see if we've messed anything up, which I can tell you we've had. we have. So here I've got two carbons. Here, I only have one carbon, so I need to multiply it by two. So I'm going to put a two in front of the carbon dioxide there in order to accomplish that. So that should be fine, but that also touched the oxygens when I did that to the O2. So we'll come to that. This is why you have to always do it one at a time, because you'll change one thing and you'll notice it changed something else. You have to methodically go through. 
Your carbons are fine. Let's go to the hydrogens. Two for each of these three here makes a total of six. And then I have seven and eight because this H should be counted twice with this two out here. So I have eight hydrogens over here. Again, two of each of these molecules, there's a total of four H's in each methanol molecule for eight. The CH3, there's three H's here. And then there's another one H down here. Okay, so total of eight H's. If I come over here now, the CO2 doesn't have any H's. I only have four H's from the water. So I need to increase that. The way I'm going to buff it up if I have four H's to try to get to eight is I need to multiply by two again. So that's going to give me a total of, let's actually use an eraser for that. There we go. That's going to give a total of four because four times two for the H2O would bring it up to eight. So now I have eight here and I didn't touch the carbon, so I'm fine. Now, last thing, I need to go in and I need to check my oxygen. For the methanol, two, and there's one oxygen in each methanol, so that brings me to two oxygens over here. But I also have my O2 on the other side here, so that brings me up to a total of four. So I have four oxygens on the reactant side. And on this side, I have four from the CO2, because two CO2 molecules, that's four, and another four from the oxygen. So I have eight oxygen now. But this is an easier fix this time than it was last time, because the O2 is a multiple of two. So if I look here, I have two oxygens from my methanol, and I have two of them from this O2 here as well. There's another two oxygens there. So what I need is I need one of these to come up to six to give me a total of eight. The easiest way to do that is to put a three in front of this because three times two would give me six oxygens that I could add to the other two to give me a total of eight oxygens. And because this is just oxygen by itself, it didn't mess anything else up. So if you look and you recheck and do your final balance, all of this should be balanced at that point. So I hope that you guys found this lecture on balancing chemical equations useful. Remember to thumbs up the video, uh, subscribe, and leave comments um, if you have any questions. And I hope to see you guys next time. We'll talk about some limiting reactants and theoretical yields.